It's time for the BallQuest Mailbag Podcast, answering your questions from the General's Quarters every week, right here on BallQuest. Good Thursday, everyone. Welcome to the BallQuest.com Mailbag Podcast, presented by our good friends at Smoky Mountain Organics. Been talking about them a lot. SmokyMountainOrganics.com is the place that you can visit them online to learn more about East Tennessee's most trusted health and wellness store, focusing on natural products and organic remedies. They got four locations in East Tennessee to serve you, including one in Knoxville at 8018 Kingston Pike, across from Trader's Joe. Of course, they've got their locations in Pigeon Forge, Sevierville, and Gatlinburg. And don't forget, if you go shop in-store, tell them about VolQuest, you'll get 15% off your total purchase. But you can also purchase online at SmokyMountainOrganics.com. With Rob Lewis and Austin Price, I'm Brent Hubs. It's the mailbag edition of the VolQuest.com podcast, and we've got plenty of questions to get to. So, gentlemen, we'll jump right into them. And volunteers, UT Volunteers 1618 starts us off um, with thoughts on our future of our offensive line. I agree we need to be more physical than we are currently, but we actually have more of that body type on the current roster than we're recruiting. What's the offensive line going to look like with some of these less physical newcomers against the big three teams we're chasing? Any insight from conversations with those in the complex regarding offensive line recruiting? Austin, and and Rob jump in here too, I don't want to say they don't want this line to be physical because that's not true. They, They do want to be physical. But it's a different type of offensive lineman, I, I think, than what you see at some some other places, and certainly what Jim Chaney wants. I, it's not just about road grading on, on you know at the guard spot with three hundred and forty pound guards. It's about athletic ability, uh, ability to play fast, uh, ability to play in space, and they don't they like pancakes, but you don't have to pancake everybody to make this offensive line go in this offensive system. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, I. I... I think it's a kind of a mix between they don't want the the you know they don't want the 340 pound guys that Cheney loved, but they also don't want to go the butch route of trying to take a 240 pound guy and put 40 or 50 pounds on them either. So there's like a happy medium there. Can you get somebody that's 295 to 300 that weighs enough but can still move? Yeah, I just I mean I'm with you. I mean I don't think they want that kind of project. Um, but, but they've got to have a guy with some athletic ability and Rob, I think athletic ability in some cases overtakes just brute strength and, and brute size and, in, in, in this offensive system. Yeah. I mean, these guys have to be able to move. I mean, I'm not, I don't claim to be an X's and O's expert, but there's some really good, I wish I could remember the exact YouTube feed it's on, but there's some really good stuff out there where some, some smart football guys are breaking down Heupel's offense at central Florida in, in the run game. And I mean, it, there's a lot of them. I mean, like pulling tackles, you know, to, to the other side of the field. I mean, it's when it, when it's going, it's choreographed. And, and just you know, for the way they play, I mean, at the pace they play at, you're not, you know, not many six five, three hundred and forty pound guys to Austin's point are going to be able to, you know, hold up and and, and play 85, 90 snaps of the game. And no. if you do, you're a freak. Yes. Yeah, that's right. If you do, you're 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 not. Um, you, you were definitely different, uh, for sure. Um, so the, uh, you know, they'll take those guys. It's, I'm not saying they don't want to recruit those guys that are freaks like that, but, um, I, I, I think they're looking for a little different, maybe a little different body type than, than what you've seen, um, in, in the past. Although this group of guys that they've inherited, I think they've turned into some, per, some pretty solid linemen. I mean, I, I don't think Darnell Wright gets enough credit for the year he's had. Uh, in the year he's having. And I think Jerome Carvin's had a good year as well. Uh, Athram wants to know, uh, have you heard anything on how the visit went to see uh, Demario Tolan? Anything on Emory Jones? Is the West Virginia commit running back a legit possibility for a flip candidate? Saw a story on him on the board. Sounds like if Bama or Auburn wants him, he's theirs. Christian Charles likely done for the year with his knee. And why is Jalen McCullough's hands always taped for games? Well, that'll do it for the rest of the VolQuest.com <laughs> mailbag podcast. Thanks to uh, whoever it was that has. All right, let, let, let's, run, let's run through them. I mean, Demario De Tolan's visit, I mean, that's just going to watch him play, let it, let him know that, that you're there, right? Well, yeah, he called Tennessee. And so in return, Tennessee said, okay, well, we're out on the road. We'll go see Demario Tolan. Um, you know, I think there's some interest there. Um, 
he's going to play the field. Um, but, you know, can Tennessee get him back up here for an, an, another visit, which would be an unofficial visit this time? I think that would be the, you know, that would be the thing that takes this thing from, you know, interest to legit interest. Okay, right. um, you know, uh, flipping it to Justin Williams, you know, I, I think Tennessee is, is right there. Again, I talked to him. He's not been here yet. He's never been to Tennessee. And, and he told me, he goes, he goes, man, I'm a field guy. He goes, and he goes, I've been looking at stuff online and stuff, but until I'm there and immerse myself in it and see the atmosphere and see the crowd and see the players, talk to the coaches, he goes, it's truly hard to, you know, be, you know, like, okay, yeah, it's definitely a spot, you know, for me. But he goes, I'm really interested in it. He's really close with Miles Campbell. They're from the same county. They grew up playing peewee ball together. And, um, you know, so, yeah, I think he's a legitimate flip candidate for Tennessee. And I would not say that, you know, it's a lock that if Auburn or Alabama won him, he would pick them over uh, Tennessee. Now, Alabama is a little bit different because Alabama is one of the best two, three teams in college football and has been, you know, pretty the best team in college football for the last decade. Um, but, you know, he and knows Tennessee wants a bigger back, and uh, that's very appealing to him. And Bama's had a little success getting guys drafted from at running back. Yes. Um, it's, with Embry Jones, isn't that very similar to Tolan or Austin? I mean, Tolan certainly has expressed more interest in other schools well, by calling yeah. Jones. Embry's not, a New Orleans kid. You know, he's a lot closer right. than Tolan. Tolan's Florida. But but he's got to get back up here before yeah. that becomes legitimate. So I guess yes. is what I was saying, right? I yeah. mean, so we'll, we'll see if anything really develops there. Tolan he, seems more. Tolan seems more of a. Or let's put it this way, Embry Jones seems more of a reach because he is a. Louisiana kid, whereas Tolan's not, you know, I mean, it's going to be a, a drive or a flight for his parents, no matter where he goes, more than likely unless he goes to Florida or Florida State. Uh, Christian Charles likely the likely done of the year with the knee. At this point, it doesn't feel like he's, he's going to be back. I mean, you know, I, I know they said right after the injury, they felt like he could come back, you know, could have come back. They, but, but we've not seen him since. I, I'm not anticipating him returning at this point. Um, doesn't doesn't seem like he's getting any practice reps or anything like that. I have no idea why Jalen McCullough's hand is taped up for games. Um, I, I don't. I mean, I'm not aware of any injury that's a prolonged issue that he's had with his hand. Uh, Sugarland Vall wants to know any truth to the rumor of Zach Evans possibly hitting the portal after TCU letting go um, Patterson. Uh, I mean, with Zach Evans, you never say never. But I mean, I you know. That kid has got a real shot to go and play and get to the league really quick. I mean, he's in a really good year. Yeah, I don't – I mean, again, we'll see who they hire and what direction they go at TCU. But um, I, I've not heard anything about him jumping in the portal for sure to leave or, or wanting to leave. And uh, if he did, I mean, he would have lots of suitors out there for, for sure But because he's had a great year. So, you're, you're right. Anything goes there, but I've not heard anything like that. Uh, Austin, C.D. Vall wants to know – uh, wants you to convince him that the Walter Nolan recruitment isn't essentially over for A&M, considering he keeps visiting there on a regular basis. A&M isn't, isn't exactly a two- to three-hour drive. Well, you know, I, I don't think it's over because, as we all know, Walter, he, he's going to, you know, do his thing, Brent. And, uh, you know, he could go in there this weekend, commit, but if he comes to Tennessee next weekend, like he told me he was planning on doing, like his mother told me they were planning on doing earlier today, um, and then officially visits Tennessee in December, because that, that visit next weekend is going to be unofficial. If he, if he officially visits Tennessee in December, then, you know, if I was A&M, and even if you had him in the boat, I'd be super nervous. Um, you know, so... Uh, no, I don't think it's completely over. Obviously, things are trending towards A and M. Um, you know, but with Walter Nolan, much like Zach Evans, it's a thrill a minute. You never say never on anything. AP, even if he commits, I mean, when you say it's going to be, you're going to be worried until you get the the signature on the piece of paper. In oh yeah, if he committed to Tennessee tomorrow, you'd have to worry. I mean, you know, he's going to keep listening, and so you know, so is everybody around him. So you know. Yeah, it is unusual that he's going back to Texas A and M as much. Yeah, as three times in like six weeks or whatever. Yeah, that that is that is unusual, and certainly I think everybody is in agreement that A and M is in the lead. But as you mentioned, Austin, do they get him on campus next weekend, and and do they get him on campus another time before signing day? They being Tennessee, we'll have to wait and see. Um, 
Roba22 would like to hear our thoughts on the younger receivers at this point. Any particular reason why we are not seeing the Jimmys more, whereas Colby, Keaton, and Walker Merrill. Rob, I think it's pretty simple. They, they've decided their three most productive receivers. The guys they trust are Cedric Tillman, Bayless Jones, um, and Javante Payton, and that's who they've decided to ride with. I mean, I, the snap count indicates that. I, mean, I think they made that decision coming out of the Florida game. Uh, I, I mean, I, I thought Coach Heupel gave a very illuminating comment last week. He was asked a question about Cedric Tillman, and he was asked a question about Jimmy Callaway in his bi-week press conference. And, I mean, he wasn't – he didn't necessarily dog Callaway, but he went out of his way to talk about how hard Cedric works every day in practice, how consistent he was. And then a couple of questions later on Callaway gave a quote that did not reflect all those same qualities that he was seeing every day in the practice field from Cedric Dillman. So I think maturity, consistency, you know, effort and execution in practice on a daily basis is what they're seeing from the older kids and they're not seeing from the younger kids. Austin, they, they, you know, you look at this, they do need some younger kids to, to step up and, and, and to get some involvement here because the ones they're riding with, other than Cedric Tillman, aren't going to be back next year. They're going to need some help at that position. Well, you know, again, kids get so disenchanted if they're not playing. And that's just college football in general. It's not a Tennessee thing. So, I mean, like Tennessee's really got to hope that a guy like, you know, Jalen Hyatt sees how Javante Payton has taken off in – that similar type role that he could have next and year. Been playing more. Yeah, and Jalen has been playing more. Um, but still, I mean, I know he's not playing like he wants to play. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, what what do those other guys do? What other options do they have? I think if anything, they've seen from other players that went to the portal, grass isn't always greener. And uh, but they do need guys like Jimmy Callaway or Walker Merrill or other people to step up and, and make some plays. Those guys played a little bit early, have not been playing nearly as much as, uh, you know, since they trimmed down the rotation. But I also get why the coaching staff trimmed down the rotation. But they also need some of those guys to, to, to come along, even if they go from playing four snaps to eight snap subs. I mean, that's four snaps. You're spelling somebody that might mean they're a little bit fresher in the fourth quarter. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll say this, though. That if there are some guys who are disgruntled and leave, I wouldn't, if I'm a Tennessee fan, I wouldn't be worried about finding transfer help at wide receiver in the portal at all. That'd be, that would be the least of my concerns. Well, I mean, in this offense, and if you're bringing a quarterback back, you, you got to feel like you got a chance to catch a whole bunch of passes uh, in, in this offense with the way yeah. that they play offense. But I, show, yeah. I think it's Cedric attractive. Tillman. Yeah. Show them Tillman and Nealis' stats from 2020 and then show them their stats from 2021. Yeah, I think that would be attractive for sure with, with some of those guys. Um, any update on Jalen Wright? Any possibility we will see him play more snaps along the season or travel to Kentucky? Uh, at, at this point, he's been battling some injury. Austin, he's fallen down the depth chart. I think it's pretty clear right now he, he you know, he's not in the – not in the plans of the rotation, particularly if Tyon Evans is healthy and you got Jabari Small. And I think they like Laneith Whitehead there uh, or even the, even the walk-on Pierce at this point, right? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it, it wouldn't matter who's healthy. If, 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 if Jabari Small and Tyon Evans are good to go, those are the two guys that are going to play every snap. They're going to ride. You know, I mean, and they Jalen Wright got in in that Pittsburgh game but, and was forced into all that second-half duty because Jabari got hurt and Tyon was out, you know, in protocol. And, you know, ever since then, he's played very sparingly. Um, but, I mean, they really – I mean, when they've had healthy guys, when they've been able to have Small and Evans back there, they really haven't played a third back a whole yeah. lot. I mean, they they played Laneith Whitehead at Missouri because it was mop-up duty time. Um, and then he's played – you know, played some when uh, you, you had an injury, um, you know, when, when Jabari Small couldn't go. But, but Whitehead's not been able to stay healthy either. I'm with you. If those – if Small and, and Tyon Evans are healthy, that's the two they're going to ride with to the finish line uh, of this season. Go Vols 2000 wants to know, Austin, can you explain how the tide is turning with the in-state kids? Is it turning enough to affect 22 kids, or will it affect later classes more than the 22 kids? Other than Webb, Jay Thomas, and Cody Jones, are there any other flip candidates out there? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think over the course of the next several weeks, Tennessee's going to, you know – continue to get more attention, especially if they win. If they go and win the game at Kentucky, um, you end up with with more, um, you know, you end up with a little bit more traction because they're ranked and, 
you know, they, they did have some nice wins early on in the season. Um, you know, you, you inevitably are going to end up, you know, giving a call to a player or two. Um, you know, I mean, would Jordan James listen if Tennessee called him? Would Dallin Hayden listen if Tennessee called him? Um, whatever happens with Caden Pope, you know, I mean, I, it seems like there's no traction there, but you just never say never because you just don't know what happens and what spots open up, you know, again. And Squirrel White's solid to Tennessee, but if, you know, Auburn or Alabama needed a receiver and they went, you know, after Squirrel White and he went for that, then would Tennessee turn back to Caden Pope, you know? Um, you know, and then, yeah, I don't really think the Wade twins would listen, but who knows? I mean, who knows what happens with Mark Stoops? I mean, his name has been bannered about for different jobs over the last several years. If he ever left Kentucky and if this was the year, would they be willing to listen, uh, you know, if Tennessee called? So, you know, I mean, to me, you know, you never say never on any of these in-state kids, but I do think that the, when I said the tide was turning, I meant more along the lines of, overall in recruiting 23s 22s um overall not just in-state guys either um you know it just feels like there's a little bit more juice out there and uh, you know Tennessee certainly has uh you know provided that with the with their play in the last you know month month and a half Rob it helps it helps in recruiting when you get when you got video to sell when you got tangible proof to sell of what you do as opposed to what they had all summer long where it was hey this is what we're going to do versus hey this is what we do do uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. I mean, both sides of the ball. I mean, nobody ever seen, you know, defensive guys have never seen a, a Tim Banks defense. Um, and and I I just have to think, when I made the comment about the receivers recruiting a minute ago, it's got to be attractive to an offense player when you see what Tennessee has done with, you know, a lot of the same personnel they had last year, except for the obvious change of quarterback. Uh, another recruiting question here, or another current roster question. What's the deal with D Beckwith? I'm really surprised we've not seen him at all this season. Not even one carry in mop up duty. Has he been a playing red shirt from the start? He think he doesn't fit in the system. Do you think he'll be back around next year? Uh, I, I don't think he's ever been a factor for playing time because I don't think he's earned his way up. I know coach said he had a couple of good weeks when he got some more reps a couple of weeks ago, but he's not going to play in front of those guys that are healthy now. Um, as for what he does at the end of the season, Austin, I mean, I, I think he's a guy that everybody will be watching because he hasn't played a snap of football this year. Yeah, I don't see him back. I, uh, I just don't. I mean, I know what hype said. And, you know, with at the time with their, you know, health at the running back spot, you had to at least make a little bit of note of it. But, you know, like, he's not played. They don't, they don't see – they don't really see him as a running back. That's the thing. It's like they don't really know what he is, um, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, I think he's, he's got to be tougher if he's going to play defense. It's not really tough enough to play tight end, I don't think. And he's probably not fast enough to play wide receiver. So, um, it, something's got to change. He'll play somewhere at some point. I just don't see it being here. I, I, I see him, you know, probably moving on after the, after the season ends. Uh, East Schaefer, 92, what current commits are planning on uh, enrolling early? Uh, Austin, we know, we know Tavon Jackson's – preparing to enroll early at this point right yeah um i don't have a commit list in front of me hubs or i would run down them um elijah herring is, a, is an early enrollee um do you have it in front of you if, if you did i could I, I just don't have it in front of me um stand by let's let's go to the next question then come back and anyway, i'm gonna i'm ready to go addison nichols early enrollee or no yes uh charles nimrod i don't, I don't think say so. yet you don't think so? I was going to say I thought he was, but go okay. Ahead. Caleb Perry? Yes. Cameron Miller? I think no on him. Mo Clipper? Yes. Mm, Squirrel White? I don't believe so. Uh, Reddick? I'm not sure. Jordan Phillips? I don't think so. No. Dylan Sampson? I don't think so. Uh, I think he is. I think Sampson is. Do you? Okay. Uh, Brian Grant? No. Uh, Brody Foley? Don't believe so. Okay. And we mentioned Jackson and we mentioned Elijah Herring. So there you go. About half of that class at this point. Looks like possibilities to be midterm enrollees for Tennessee. All right, Rob, to you. Deshaun, 13, thoughts on the Florida situation? Hard to believe Zook and McElwain had a better winning percentage than Mullen. Plus, they don't have the awkward personality. What do you make of the Florida situation? I think it's ugly. I, mean, I think, I mean, 
from the outside looking in, the temperature of the Florida fans seems, seems to be running pretty hot right now. And I don't blame them. I mean, there's, there's, that, that's, that's one of the top jobs in America. Top 10 for sure, maybe top five. I mean, there's just no excuse not, not to win there. With the facilities, with the money, with the athletes, you know, you can – I mean, how many SEC prospects can you get in the car in Gainesville and drive and see within three or four-hour radius and be back home sleeping in your own bed that night? Dozens. Yep. And, yeah, I mean, it, Mullen is just not a good fit. I'm going to, I don't know if, I don't know what his buyout situation is, if they're frustrated enough to dump him this year, but uh, it's not going to work out. It certainly doesn't feel good for, for them. It doesn't seem like it's trending in the right direction. And now, again, they look at their schedule. They can win their last four and go eight and four. Um, but, it, it won't be the prettiest eight and four, but it'll still be eight and four. We'll see what, you know, administratively they think of that. But it, but I mean they they've got a real chance to go to go I mean, eight and four. It just doesn't feel like it's going to end well. You know, I mean they could definitely go eight and four, and it would be tough to fire a guy. I think for most programs who went eight and four and was in the SEC championship game a year ago, but I don't know if it'll be tough for that program. All right, ten Ken eighty five. When will Texas and Oklahoma actually enter the SEC? Will they fulfill contract or buy out of and get in next year? I don't see them in next year. I think twenty four at the earliest. That's my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The interesting part is Tennessee plays Oklahoma in 24. So what happens there? Do they just say that's a conference game that year if that happens? And you got them on your schedule? I said, Jerry, have them already on their schedule? How do you work that? Or do the does Tennessee, you know, have to move off of that? That'd be something I'd be interested to ask Danny White, just because it's this interesting time where, you know, in theory, you could go to Oklahoma, or I guess it's supposed to be here, right? Oklahoma comes here in – 24 non-conference and then potentially they come here two years later and it's in conference you know what i mean like it, it, it could be a, a lot of interesting dynamics yeah i think you tear that contract up because that's a, a that's a non-conference i mean the conference the, the conference games are, are a different contract different set of setup to everything than it is a home and home that you generate with an individual team out of conference so my guess is that deal will get tore up uh, because them coming into the league, you're never going to fulfill the, the, both ends of that home and home. But uh, we'll, we'll see well, what happens there in the next year or so and whether or not anybody can buy out of anything early. I, I don't – I think 24 at the earliest, Rob. Is, is I, what think, I, think AP, what do you, I think they tear it up and, and get a home and home in Washington. What do you think? A home and home in Washington? AP, that's, it's not an, that's not an AP's dream scenario. You guys want to no. go to Washington. That's we, right. we, the only two you can get to by water and by land. So are you, I mean, would you like land in Portland and get in a boat and make yeah. your way up? The, is that what, is that how you and do that? Hey, Pete, we have, we have to check on Bandon Dunes contacts for you. Oh, let's do it. Uh, if, if, if that happened, AP would never see the game. He'd be on a boat and on a golf course. And that's I, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm already plotting. <laughs> I'm already plotting. When Tennessee, when, when, when Tennessee plays no at one. Nebraska in 26 or 27 or whatever it is, Sand Hills, baby. That's number 10. I've got four of the top 10 down. I'm trying to get to them all. Can I get that? That to me, that one could be one of the, the more interesting ones just because it's out in the middle of nowhere. Always working a scheme. All right. Charlie Work wants to know Oklahoma State's, you know, Oklahoma State University's punishment by the NCAA seems to confirm the trend that teams who cooperate with the NCAA face harsh penalties. Is there any reason to think Tennessee will be an exception? Can the Vols change course and stop cooperating? Or is the damage already done there? And secondly, what happened to Rick Barnes' recruiting momentum? Are the recruiting gifts more related to NIL or last year's team disappointing finish? Rob, start with hoops. Uh, I think they're more related to losing two or three assistant coaches and and your two best recruiters. And no, not, no knock on Mike Schwartz. I mean, he's landed Josiah James, to Jemai Meshack. He can recruit. But, I mean, Des, Des Oliver in particular – was a volume recruiter for Tennessee. Keon, Jaden, Grant Williams, Jordan Bone. I mean, Des has and has done a lot. Mike McClung. Kim was a Kim was a good recruiter. I mean, I think. And if you look at it like this is, I think this is a big deal and is part of it. You lost those two assistant coaches, and Tennessee has not since Rick been here has been here with few exceptions has not been a program that sees a kid in April or, or June gets you know offers him goes after him hard they 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 recruit kids for two and three years like josiah james came to tennessee's elite camp when he was a freshman des oliver offered keon johnson a scholarship in spring of his freshman year 
Jaden Springer, through the Bobby Day's connection, had been on ten a Tennessee target since his freshman year of high school. And they didn't have any of those guys in this class. And I think losing the, that staff and the relationships that they had was a big part of it. I mean, Rick Barnes was pretty definitive last week when I asked him about it, that he didn't think NIL was an obstacle. I and mean, he was on the record and pretty pretty clear about it, however. Yeah, we'll see what happens with the NIL stuff moving forward. I, that's something that everybody's trying to get, uh, certainly get their hands around and, and, and figure that out um, in terms of how to manage that from a recruiting standpoint and, and all of those things. Uh, Rick Barnes made it clear where he stood on, on that part of it. Uh, but there's obviously going to be a lot of schools out there make a lot of promises, and, and that's something that will come up in the recruiting world for sure. One other basketball recruiting question. Is Tennessee trying to bring in – is it Angel Montes, Rob? Come on, uh, Angel. On hell, Montes. Okay. I'm sorry, on hell. And squeeze him into the fall class before signing day. Yes. I don't know if they can do it. But yeah, they'd like to. Okay. And then back to the Oklahoma State question about the penalties there. I don't think Tennessee is going to change course in terms of, you know, doing some magic 180 or anything like that. They've obviously been cooperating for a year, um, but uh, we'll see. I mean, the NCAA is clearly not doing anything in a hurry with, with any decision that's out there. And that's the frustrating thing for a lot of the, for the Oklahoma state people. And we're seeing this kind of nationally across the board. A lot of people talking about this. I mean, there were kids that were punished at Oklahoma state on Wednesday that were in middle school when those violations took place at Oklahoma state. And, and that's gaining national attention by a lot of national writers and a lot of national people. Cause that's not what, that's not what the NCAA says they're about. When you talk about the student athlete experience, taking away a postseason for a guy who was in the seventh grade when the infraction occurred, doesn't seem like a $300 infraction, no less. Yeah. It doesn't seem like you're catering to the student athlete experience. Um, and I think that's being noted by a lot of people, Rob. And everybody's been fired. Nobody's there. Yeah. Again, for a $300 infraction. And, 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 and let's, let's, let's add to this. Do we, do we, does anybody think that this isn't just like, well, you know, we couldn't punish North Carolina and we really couldn't punish, you know, we hadn't punished LSU yet. We couldn't punish schools X, Y, and Z. So we're just going to take it out on, you know, I mean, Oklahoma State for that Oklahoma $300 State, infraction. If Oklahoma State got a postseason ban, LSU should have to play with, like, their best intramural team for two years. I mean, you know, it, it, it was a shocking deal. I mean, like, I mean, nobody across, nobody around the country who's followed that went, well, that, that makes sense. Like, the reaction from everybody was the same. was like, what? You know, that, that, I mean, I, no, no one saw that one coming. I think when people, when adults responsible lose their jobs and millions of dollars in future earnings, as was the case there, as was the case in Arizona with Sean Miller, I think that's, I, I think justice has been served. I think punishing, like you said, kids that were middle school when that went down is, is ridiculous. Yep. And, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, by the time Tennessee's case gets to the, gets to the table at the rate things are going, it, it, I mean, there, there may not be a committee of, I mean, who knows? It may be the league, you know, the individual leagues that are punishing people in, in terms of nobody knows what the next direction is going to be uh, with the, the committee on infractions. There was proposal legislation out there this week uh, for, you know, for the accountability act, which says you got to, you know, do faster due process by the NCAA and, and don't punish kids. So we'll see if that gets, that content, that movement continues based on what happened with the Oklahoma what, State deal. What happens first? Tennessee's stuff gets resolved uh, by the NCAA, not Tennessee doing something, but by the NCAA. Or I play all the top ten. <laughs> well, is the top ten even feasible? Oh, it's definitely feasible. feasible. And let, let me go ahead and add, I will be not, or I will not be, <laughs> I will not be, taking my sweet time getting to the top 10. <laughs> no we, we have gotten no stunned by that. No one speed ahead locomotive. No one is stunned by that notion for, for sure that you're going to be full speed ahead. You will move at a much faster pace. Than the committee <laughs> and if anybody, practice. if anybody can help me with the remaining courses, <laughs> Chinook, well, I mean, Hubbard, Cyprus, Hubbard, when you, when you got a private, private jet at your disposal. I mean, it, <laughs> it makes, 
makes everything more feasible. Oh, uh, it's just it's the world of Austin, and none of us uh, know how to play in it or know what know exactly how it works. That's for sure. Vol and SC wants to know predict whether or not the Cats have something schemed up attacking Elante Taylor first play comes Saturday and throughout the game for his comment. Do you all think did you all like the comment or should he have omitted the part so that he doesn't give them bulletin board material? I don't think Kentucky needs bulletin board material. I think that this is a big deal. They've not won it back-to-back in so long. Um, their, their fans are going to want this game. And, and honestly, I got no problems with it. I had several people, former players, uh, you know, former coaches here, former, you know, whatever, that have reached out to me and said, you know, that's how Tennessee should look at Kentucky because that's how it's always been. So, you know, I, I, you know, I mean, you can say bulletin board material, sure, but I mean, is it once you get out there and start playing? I don't think anybody's going, oh, Alante Taylor's comments. You know, it fires you up to get prepared for the game. It fires you up in pregame, but once the game starts, it's just like the cold; it goes away. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think I just think some of that stuff is really over talked uh, and over over jumped over uh, discussed in a lot of ways. I, I I think that stuff wears off really quick. All right, volunteered eighty seven wants to know what visits does Joseph out of Georgia have left, and when's he expected to announce? Austin, do you still think that's a Michigan UT battle? And assuming a normal amount of turnovers, Hooker's rushing yards in line with the rest of the season, the average special teams, et cetera. Hooker has under X yards passing. And uh, I don't know what that question means. So let's go back to the joy. I, I, I don't, I'm not grasping that one. Let's go back to the calculus there. Hubs? Yeah. Go back to, jo- to, to Joseph's so what's going on there. Is that Tennessee, Michigan? It is. Uh, I, I don't know if he has any more visits lined up. Um, you know, and as for Hooker, I mean, when you, uh, you know, you multiply the number of yards, subtract the number of carries, and, and then, and then. What know, happens carry, when there's carry, a bracket carry, carry and the parentheses three. around the, the equation? I don't remember those things. All right. Carry, carry Va- the three. Va- carry well, the, the foil three. method, Hubbard. You don't remember the foil method? <laughs> no, I don't remember no foil hey, method. Hey, Hubs, what is pie? <laughs> what is Apple, pie? pecan, lemon meringue. Who's burying um, Grant's tomb? <laughs> uh, Vol Daddy wants to know, it appears to me that the current players have made improvements in regards to their strength and conditioning. They appear to be in better shape and physically stronger than in recent years. I know info about the strength and conditioning program is hard to come by, but what feedback are you getting regarding uh, the strength coach, Coach Schmidt, and his staff, strength and st- conditioning staff, spends most of the time with the players and any other coaches, and I feel like they've really suffered with a lack of player development the past few years because of the revolving door at that position. What are your thoughts on Tennessee's strength staff? I think they've, I think they've done a good job in year one. Um, you know, uh, we'll see how they continue to develop moving forward. But I, th- I do think this is a well-conditioned football team, Rob. And I think it's a football team that physically looks better. And again, everybody lost a year last year. You know, guys were at home making, you know, cement buckets to try to figure out a way to lift some weights doing, in a lot of as, places. As, some, as, as somebody told me they were doing prison workouts. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's it's different than, than the nutrition and the regiment that these guys are going through now. I mean, there should be a big difference between last year and this year, really with every team around the country. And I think it's nutrition as much as anything. I mean, because, I mean, I mean, some people that really follow it know, but I mean, there's some really meticulous stuff that goes on on an individual basis with how they plan kids' diets, you know, caloric intake and, and eat this, don't eat that, eat this at this time don't eat that at that time. And that was, you know, obviously not taking place last year when everybody was at home during COVID. And I mean, I think, I mean, I think we've seen the defense get worn down some when, you know, when the offense can't stack up a couple first downs together and, you know, they have three and outs and run off a minute of the clock, but not as badly as I would have envisioned, you know, maybe back in the preseason. I mean, there's been some, there's been a few games where the time of possession discrepancy has been enormous and, you know, while the defense kind of, you know, waned in the second half, it wasn't just, you know, a, a lay down like I thought we might see back in August. I mean, I, I think it really will go underrated, you know, uh, when you think about, you know, A.J. Artis out there in the driveway with a broomstick, with three blocks of cheese tied to it, you know, doing the Twitter videos. I mean, it's something that, you know, we all will probably forget about, you know, 10 years from now, but we shouldn't. We really well, should I mean, and again, guys should be better off. And and with the, the schedule they have, you know, Tennessee's got meals for guys multiple times a day on campus. So uh, their nutrition is better. And, um, again, because of what they went through a year ago when they didn't have any kind of real workout system, 
Uh, they, they have year round now and it should have paid dividends for, for yeah, but when you did the chin ups right. with the broom handle hubs, you got to eat the cheese. <laughs> you're terrible. You're terrible. You, you're wound up tonight. We need to tape this podcast during the day, early I in mean, the afternoon. You, <laughs> you, you, I don't know what you've been sitting around. Well, what, what do you get? You got some kind of like pumpkin spice in your Christmas tree there behind you or something. Is that what you listen, got going buddy, on? Listen, my kids have got Twix for days downstairs from Halloween and I've had like 50. <laughs> Yeah, and how many how many re, how many Reese eggs have you eaten? Zero, zero. It's just been Twix lately. I'm on the Twix kick. Uh, um, on, on a side note, I mean, Rob, I, I try to take this in a, in a, in a light hearted way, and, and Hubs is like being serious about like the working out and stuff. Come on, Hubs, you got to learn to lighten up. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I, I know talking to you know a high school coach has got a player on the team now that I mean, he was describing some of the stuff that that his kid was doing. And it, and it really was. It was like it was like prison workouts, like in your in your cell. I mean, some of the things that they were trying to utilize and get done. I mean, because not. I mean, a lot of a lot of gyms were closed too. Right. Like they could go to their local gym, nope. and and throw up weights. And who you know, how many of these guys have a bench and a full set in their basement? Not many. That that's for sure. So uh, this team does look better. And as again, they they should look better consider what they went through a year ago. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Mailbag uh, Podcast presented by Smoky Mountain Organics. we got to run so that Austin can get to his email box and see if anybody is sending him notifications on how they can get him on a golf course somewhere. Uh, who knows what that will end up uh, going, but uh, he's made his pitch tonight or today for his you top You shoot 10. your shot, Hubs. You shoot your shot. Remember, Cypress, uh, yeah, Sand always. Hills, uh, Shinnecock, um, you know, Marion. You know, let them go right down the line. There's no shame in, in Austin Price, that's for sure. All right, for Austin Price and Rob Lewis, I'm Brent Hubs. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your Thursday, everybody. You've been listening to the VolQuest Mailbag Podcast every week right here on VolQuest.